Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be checking out another bogus YouTube sponsorship. This is the thing, so I showed in the other video about the malware that simply spreads like a worm. This is the other thing, if you have a decent sized channel, they will send you an offer for a bogus sponsorship, offering you money in order to promote something. And this is kind of a creative one, because it's not what you think it is, and that's why if you look down here, and I... I'm not a huge fan of this in general because it's kind of this kind of ends up being a red herring where it's saying that yeah it's all safe. Well, this is a false sense of security. So it's not the mythical PDF malware. This is in fact a perfectly homeless PDF file which we will run in a second that has a link to a less homeless thing. So we would like to offer you now. Of course, I know what Netflix is. You can create a promotional video based on your preferences. Now this doesn't look that different than an email from a genuine sponsor. Now, this is a bit of a red flag. I feel like impersonating Netflix here is a bit of an L because anyone with any, like anyone pretty much who is an internet user knows how Netflix works and knows this is bogus. After finalizing confirming the details, we will pay you half and then afterwards they'll pay me the other half. Okay, well, I hope, I hope I'll get that money soon because... You know, I'm thinking about going to DEF CON, and it's going to cost a bit of money to go, so I hope they're going to pay for that. Uh, so, now I'm going to go over to the VM, and we can see what will happen. So, we're in the VM. Business offer for YouTube. Now, this... I, I don't know if... I shouldn't say this looks legit. Now, here we go. Now, of course, uh, an NDA is not valid unless I agreed to it. So, uh, don't be bothering trying to take down the video... Uh, so we've got a non-disclosure agreement. Now, now here it says it is supported on macOS. And we've got a private library. Oh, so that's how they're trying to disguise it. So we've got this. And we've also got... Oh, and there is a Mac payload. File deleted. You know, it's quite possible that that was simply done to throw everyone off their tracks. Uh, and again... This Now, I've actually seen this exact format before, and Leo from the PC Security Channel also has. Uh, he even mentioned that they have a Mac OS, but it, that's just a red herring. It's very hard to make a Mac stealer, comparatively. Uh, so they hope you'll just try on a Windows device, which is what we're going to do. So now we can open the information from Media Zip, which is not password protected, and then we can open the 7-Zip. Now we need to give it the password Netflix. And here we go. Now this is not the most well-disguised payload. This is an EXE. It has a PDF icon, but it's a .exe. It doesn't even have a fake PDF. And as is typical for Steelers, it's going to have a, the name of a random legitimate application. It's about 70 megabytes. So there is even a chance this is a PyCylon payload. It's a ShareX setup, compatibility previous versions. Okay, now we could just open this in 7-zip and see if there's anything obvious. Intels, there's a certificate, there's some dot data, nothing, nothing immediately obvious. So now I'm going to make sure that the MITM proxy is going so that we can see, see what we can see uh, as we run this file. I'm also going to close the browser just to reduce the amount of network noise and wait for everything to stop. Okay, just click the XE, and immediately we've got some hits for MSN. Oh, okay, these could just be, these could be like small screen hits. Oh, oh, here we go. So first of all, we get a DNS request to find the domain for the command and control server. And uh, it's behind our old friends at Cloudflare, who really are doing uh, God's work at keeping anyone from finding the IP of threat actors. So here we go. Response. Uh, so act life. Response. Okay. XML. This is base64. This is my IP. This is my IP again. This is NordVPN. This is TCP, but this is not. This is just looking for some sort of request. 
So the only interesting piece is this. So we can, of course, we can download this. And we can also copy and paste it and go on over to base64. And this is not plain text, so it can either be a binary file or it can be encrypted. We can also try auto-detecting in case there is just a different kernel set, uh, but it looks to be roughly the same. We can, try, we can try getting at that in a second. So let's just see if anything shows up when we just browse that domain normally, and then we can try it using Shodan to find out if we can find out anything more uh, about this server where it might be running. Wow, they even have they even have like Cloudflare attack mode on this. And now we're getting a Russian 404. So maybe this is in fact a Russian site. And if we go back, we just get a welcome to Nginx page. Now, in terms of OPSEC, this is pretty small because this is going to stop me from just searching on Shodan for their HTML and finding their real IP address. But kind of that's another red flag for any domain so we can try poking around the api a bit more fail okay we just get just get one line fail because you can only post to this you can't can't uh, do that you can also upload this file to virus total so that we could find out what their sandboxes think and that also may be a path to finding out more about the encryption that's interesting. So this is the first time ever that VirusTotal has actually seen this specific file. And then we can see there, there's so far no engines are flagging it, which is alarming. But that is, okay, okay, Virus finally got someone flagging it. Okay, good. Because that is the trouble with these the fake sponsor payloads is they can be a bit, a bit stealthier. Okay, okay. Uh, it just seems like the faster scanners were less good, which kind of makes sense. Although that's a lot of undetected. Microsoft undetected, Malwarebytes undetected, Kaspersky undetected, and some of the detections here, oh good, Google, Google detected. That's actually good. Uh, but not a ton. Popular threat label Trojan, yes. GNU, okay. So this was probably cross-compiled on Linux. Well, bogus information. Oh, and there's some other files here now. So we get a send message, edge browser version.txt, and it's just catting some stuff, uh, default cookies. So not all of it is scripted. This is our Firefox. Software.txt, which is going to be some sort of log. Oh, and here's our hardware ID. Now, this is Russian, so I was wrong. This is almost certainly a Russian threat actor. PID, hardware ID, which, of course, is just to identify the computer. Oh into the discord token system.txt and this is just confirming I guess that the stealer is still running now here's the chunk of base 64 so this seems to be a, a pre uh, some sort of pre-prepared thing you know this is genuine text. Uh, to me, this looks like this could, in fact, just be some sort of garbage data added. Here's the files that it seems to target. That's a weird line. Who falls solid group MySQL. 
Okay, so there's some sort of SQL in here. Now, from Googling the command and control server, I discovered that uh, any.run has called it and identified it as a Luma stealer and that it's also being distributed to uh, as a setup 105.exe with uh, and then it renames itself to bitlocker to go.exe. Now this one doesn't doesn't identify itself as a specific, so it's less obvious where it might be coming from. Now it's always fun to reboot and see what it does when your system boots. So we instantly got some DNS going on. And let's see how long it takes for our Luma Stealer to start up again. Oh my. Is that just Discord? Desktop app web? I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I didn't install any UWP apps. And Defender just hit something. Oh, but of course it's just our VMware cloaker, which is not a virus. Oh, and it's pinging us again. Maybe it's actually, nope, nope, it hasn't. So this one then may be a one and done. It doesn't seem to have relaunched itself. Now let's, uh, now that we've got uh, Defender going, uh, let's try running this again with Defender Active and see if it does anything. Uh, let's just double check that. Has anything happened yet? Ah, ah. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, okay. So we just got Luma Steelered with Defender Active. Not that I was surprised, but I thought I would try it. Uh, some of the it does catch some of the stealers now, but it doesn't catch this one. Now we have real time, but we don't have the cloud protection. Okay. Now, something I wanted to try because someone in my Discord suggested it is whether we can kill this with controlled folder access. So I'm going to do two things that should significantly hold in the system. We're going to we're going to allow Google Chrome. We're going to allow Chrome through controlled folder access, and then we're going to put the Chrome folder into controlled folder access. Done. Now I can run the payload. Oh, okay. And it seems to have gone off without. So I'm guessing that controlled folder access does not work against info stealers. So I'm guessing it only blocks writing and deletion. Uh, I just wanted to test it. Uh, so, okay, so controlled folder access does not stop info stealers. So that is good to know. So that is going to be all uh, for this video. I hope it was interesting. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it is not sponsored by Netflix. Bye.